we could actually do this um, even, even, well, I say even easier. Um, it requires a different object, um, but this would work just as well. Um, I'm going to use sprintf, um, which is a, uh, a term, I believe, that comes from C programming. Um, and it basically means you can concatenate, i.e. string together, um, a variety of uh, symbols and numbers into a single, uh, well, a single symbol, for example. Um, and in fact, in, apply that in turn to a message. So what I could do is to, because all of them begin with the, the sound, um, I could put in sound, and then I put in a particular symbol, which is dollar, uh, sorry, percentage symbol and I. And what that does is that that as a as a symbol, the, those two characters um, mean put it, you know, take the number that I receive and replace um, that sort of la that character or that dual character with that number or whatever whatever it is that I get. Well, in fact, in this case, it's an I, so it's an integer. Um, so I could again just replace this. And this will do exactly the same thing. So in fact, I don't need to spend the time writing in everything into the call, which might be a bit of a pain in the neck. And this should do exactly the same. As indeed it does. OK, but I'll stick with call for the time being. So that's fine. Um, we now need a keyboard. Um, so I'll make a case slider. Oops, I just managed to write in something totally wrong. And um, obviously the numbers that come out of case slider. So we'll take this first uh, C at the bottom, and that is number thirty-six. Well, we want that number to actually come out as number one. The next black key to number two, D to number three. Uh, D sharp to number four and so on. So um, we will, uh, so 36 basically minus 35 is going to give us one. Oops. So that gives us one. So each note now is a different sound exactly what we wanted. Um, so that's pretty handy. Um, there's other ways that you could get this whole thing to work. So, um, uh, I mean, you could, if you, if you remember, we, we went, if you go back to the, early ex the earliest exercise that we did, which was the uh, drum sequencer, um, you could simply um, attach that drum sequencer to the top of this in order to make it um, play this instead of your internal MIDI uh, sampler or synth um, that you were using before. Um, you could, you could, you know, you'd, you'd, um, it would do essentially exactly the same thing. It's just that you'd be using your own sounds and you would be demonstrating a knowledge of how to um, use a sampler, basically, or make a sampler of your own. Um, but this isn't the only way that you could trigger those values. You could um, get, uh, you could uh, trigger them at random if you wanted to. So we will choose uh, random. And we have 24 values, so we'll put in 24, or 24 sounds, I mean. Um, and, but we need, obviously, to add 1 so that those values come out as 1 to 24. Go into col. And then obviously you could trigger that any way you like. So it's going through any of those sounds at random. Um, obviously you could do a drunk thing as well if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to go on and uh, make this sort of fairly basic polyphony that I was talking about. And to do that, um, <clears throat> what I need to do is to have multiple grooves able to play. Um, the reason I need that is because I can't have groove object playing 
more than one sound at once. Um, so if I want more than one sound to sound at once, then I need to have several grooves running. Um, <coughs> and so I want to duplicate part of that engine and have that happen several times. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this part of the patch and I'm going to encapsulate it like that. And I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, um, player. I'm going to call it player. So that will be my sort of playing, playing back object or player object. So if I double, double click on it, then obviously I get um, that in there. And I think actually that's probably all I need. So I'm going to make an abstraction out of that. And if you remember, the way I do that is to go into that patch and then save it. So save as and save it to... Um, yeah, I'm saving it to the same place. <coughs> and that means that I can... Oops, not in there, sorry. I can make a player and it comes up with the appropriate uh, number of outlets. So I can make several of those and if you remember, you know, if I duplicate a player uh, or to duplicate an abstraction, it, you know, it becomes an object. I can have multiple instances of them. What I, what I can't do at the moment is to tell Cole which of those instances I want to play from. Because um, if I send the message to all of them at the same time, then they will all play the same sound every time I send it, because they'll all be being sent the same information. What I want is when I play one note um, for the information to be sent to one player, when I play another note, and the information to be played sent to another um, uh, instance of that player, and then if I press another note to, to be sent to the third one. Um, and that means that I could play, say, three notes at the same time and each of those notes would be sent to a different player and so you would get all three playing back at the same time. But we need a way of, of getting them to, um, to go to each respective player. So I'm going to add some objects um, and I'm going to do that and then explain what I've done after I've done it because I think that's going to be clearer. So first of all I need some space between my call and my uh, player. In fact, I don't need that player anymore at all because I'm referring to these ones. So in fact, I'm going to uh, get rid of that. 